Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a pretty traditional unboxing episode for you guys tonight. Starting things off here today, I had purchased a guitar on Reverb because I thought it had exceptionally nice wood grain for the era that this came in, so I thought I would check it out to see, is it worth it for my own personal collection? Because sometimes when it comes to online buying, you just have to buy it and see. And if it's not for me, I'm sure it's for somebody else. But on first impressions here, looks like we got a 90s Gibson case. Uh-oh, looks like our handle has seen slightly better days. It's actually not the handle, it's just missing the mounting bracket. And I think somebody has locked themselves out of our combo lock. But you can watch this video to learn how to fix that. The combo lock ended up being 834. That was a tricky one. But thankfully, right before I was starting to get wore down, having to do the whole thousand method way, I, I just stumbled upon it. Sometimes it's magic. But let's go ahead and see what is inside this case. It is a beautiful 70s Les Paul custom. So there we go. I think you can kind of see why I wanted to pick this one up. It is a wood grain city guitar. It even has some flame figuring in that middle piece. But unfortunately, we've got a couple of replaced parts. But I just couldn't pass this thing up. I mean, when you're looking for a nice, beautiful Norland era natural custom, you generally don't find a lot of flame figuring. But finding that and the wood grain was just too special to pass up, even though it didn't have the original case and everything. Oh my goodness, my friends, even the neck has some pretty considerable flame and grainage. And the grain is on the side that you see. Yeah, this is a nice one. In condition wise, we got a couple of nicks and dings around the edges. We've got those newer style Schaller strap locks. I'll be replacing those. It's not a pancake body, so it's right after that era. The serial number puts it as a 1978. But check out the figuring on the neck here. Yeah, this I have no regrets about this one. So unfortunately, we are missing the original speed knobs and we're missing an era correct chainsaw case. But oh no, I thought he had taken the toggle switch tip off and it would be in the case but <sighs> it's it's right there that's a shame because vintage correct switch tips are kind of expensive and hard to find oof that's why you take those things off in transit because one good thump and they just shatter into a million pieces so sure it's not a two-piece flame maple top custom like you can find if you're really lucky but that's a pretty cool common spec one but I have a feeling that's not the last time we'll be seeing that guitar in this episode because what's in here might just help us out. So I was watching an eBay auction, the Gibson Dependable guy. He buys guitars and parts them out, and he even parts out the cases sometimes. So I'm always watching those auctions just in case there's a good deal. And hey, looky here, a Gen 2 chainsaw case. We've got a couple of scuffs on the outside, but it looks like all three of our latches are here. The latches are definitely a bit worn, you gotta be careful with these, but the back latch is in good shape, and most importantly the handle, very nice. But not only did he have the case, inside here, well besides that not being attached, should be the knobs that I had won in a separate auction, and I just had him do the combined shipping, and oh my goodness. This is just fate right here, because I know I'm unboxing them at the same time, but I bought these weeks before, and I just happened to have a vintage switch tip right here so I can replace it. I also got a spare poker chip, but I, thankfully I don't need that on this one. But wow, this case has definitely seen better days. You know what? That's actually really interesting. I've never done that before. So it looks like the pick compartment inside Gen 2 chainsaw cases is actually just a complete separate plastic foam thing that kind of has a little click inside bit. So you can just slide that right back into place. It's interesting how modular that is. But looking at our imprint here, that looks more like a Les Paul standard to me. But let's check out this mystery package from the Gibson Garage. It's too light to be a guitar, so I think it's just like a, a merch box, but this was delivered slightly before my Leo Scala V. So let's just open this thing up here together. Guess we'll just have to open it to find out. All this packaging for a cool slash hat. So I did actually ask them if they had one of these in stock and they said they would send it to me, but there's a reason I needed this hat, but we'll cover that in another unboxing episode. But the feature that really ties this entire hat together is that green brim right there, just the outline edge of it. That's pretty cool. We'll add it to the hat collection for now. There's gotta be something else in here. 
A big box. All right, now I'm kind of excited. What could be in here? It would make me really happy if it was one of those slash collector book sets. I mean, it's heavy enough. It's a friendly happy holidays message here. That That's very nice, guys. Thank you. Well, let's find out what's in here. A whole bunch more swag. A couple more hats for my collection. Some playing cards. Those will actually come in handy. I'm curious if there's, like, guitars on them. Let's find out. Looks like the Gibson branding and a Les Paul on the back of them, but the cards themselves are the same. We've got a mug. That's different from the last one that we saw in the Greeny episode. I actually really like this. That's slick. We've got a breast pocket shirt, a tea t shirt, and then another tiny box inside of this box that was inside of a different box. Here we got a cozy, a really sweet iron on patch. I love that banner. But this has got to be my favorite right here. Reclaimed wood, like wood that they couldn't use because they chopped off a Les Paul's body already. So there's some scrap. So they make little trinkets like these and sell them at the garage. And lastly, some sort of a tin sign. Very cool. It's like a record. Thank you, Gibson Garage guys. All right, we got a couple of packages left. Let's do our small one. This was another eBay find where bidding got fierce like i severely overpaid for this <laughs> the seller wasn't responsive to any of my questions so i was a little bit disappointed with what ended up coming here but it's kind of what i expected anyway but inside here is another one for my new old stock parts collection this time it's another set of dirty fingers pickups but this time in the 80s box but the auction showed the two pickups with this in the background. So I had asked them, does it have one box or they do they each have a box? I figured it was just one. But the bidding got so fierce, it was like it was two. And so far, I can't even see the pickups in it. But it feels like they're in here. Inside the Dunkin' Donuts napkin, we've got it. And what's really cool is we still have the screws. So they're definitely the new old stock ones. However, it's possible these have been installed. But for my own collection, I really don't care about that because there's no way to actually seal these boxes. So as long as they have all the parts, you know, minus manuals, I'm usually okay. But unfortunately, I am out a box on this. But hey, at least we have one. And I do have one spare box, and I was thinking this was blank. But no, it's for a posi lock. So I think I'll just, for the time being, throw that in there. But here's my other set of new old stock ones. These are the super dirt set though, because they're the double creams. So slightly different packaging. Very cool. If you're selling anything like this in the original replacement part box, please let me know. And I guess while we're at it, here's the 70s box for a gold pole piece dirty finger. So I've got a whole bunch of new old stock dirty fingers pickups. So what else do we have today? Let's start with this guitar over here. I'd received a message from the guy that helps me get guitars from Japan and he's asking for my help with this. Now, if anybody else would have been asking me to do this, I, I probably would have said no, but he's helped me so much. It's like, uh, of course I'm gonna help you, man. Because he's been looking for one of these Stratocasters at a decent price and he got the approval from his wife, but the approval was for after tax time. And since this good deal probably wouldn't have lasted, he asked if I could purchase it and hold it for him for a couple of months. To which I said, yeah, that's probably the least I could do for all the help you've done for me. <laughs> so, uh, very interesting case. I would have never imagined it would come with something like this it's like snake skin it even feels like it it's got a pretty nice handle and you can see what's in here a nash guitar now i actually have documented a nash before but somebody uh put a fender decal on it and that made that kind of a controversial episode but this time it is just a straight up nice sonic blue aged s type guitar with the proper branding there and for being a Chinese made case, this is really nice. Super form fit, which I'm not used to on <laughs> Stratocaster guitars. I'm not necessarily dissing Fender. I mean, there's a reason why all their guitar cases are kind of modular, so they can fit all kinds of different models without having to be specifically for a Stratocaster or a Telecaster. But wow, this thing's got a good weight to it, and it has a very full V-shaped neck profile, and it's all aged and worn in. I don't know, maybe I will have to review this as I hold on to it, just for a special Fender Friday episode. I mean, this feels very good. That's a really fat pronounced V-shaped profile right here. And then it kind of thins out almost, which is strange to have a neck that goes from chunky to slightly thinned out, but I guess it makes sense, but you can still definitely feel that V profile throughout. 
And this finish, he was initially looking for, I think, Shell Pink, but this one came up at a good price that, and I, I agree with him, it is looking nice. The only thing I don't really like is this yellow lacquer. I think they were going for like that amber to hue, but it just came across Donald Duck Telly Yellow. So let me know if you want to see a review of this one by leaving a like on the video. If we get 3,000 within 48 hours, I'll go ahead and do this on some Fender Friday episode. But until then, let's get to our last unboxing. Which, to be honest, it's nothing too exciting. It's another one I got from Gibson Dependable. Well, this was another couple of weeks even before that first auction. It is an absolutely gorgeous L6S case. This is in very good condition for its age. Generally, these things get all beat up, and that's why they don't actually sell them with their L6S guitar. So that's why this case is so expensive, is because people are missing them. But it's got all the latches. It even has our little locking one right here. But this is one of the red interior versions. Now, is the purple one a little bit more desirable? Yes, but this is technically more correct for your later 70s L6S. It might even fit an L5S. I'm not entirely too sure. That was a good find. I'm very happy with this case. Much more happier than that chainsaw case. So I don't regret picking that up. But hey, since we've got a little bit of time left today, let's go ahead and fix up that Les Paul Custom. Well, it turns out this thing was a lot dirtier than I thought it was. And while cleaning it, I found something interesting that I thought could teach a very valuable lesson so we're just going to do a full review and demo on this one tomorrow. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you tomorrow with this custom. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.